Sunda. Uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, everybody likes music because they sweet. In our Telugu, there are so many singers out of all the Bala Subramanyam, Garu, and uh, another singer, female, that is Gita uh, Madhuri Garu. They are the famous singers in Telugu because of their uh, sweet voice. What is the cause and what is the structure it is producing the sweet voice that is nothing but the larynx. Today we are going to discuss about the larynx and it is also called voice box. It is also called voice box or larynx. Larynx or voice box. And the larynx is a essentially an organ of respiration and phonation and also protects the respiratory passage. These three functions of the larynx, they are very, very important. Because one is, it facilitates the respiration and it allows only air, not allowing the foreign particles. And whenever there is an entry of any solid material, it produces cough. That is nothing but the, a protective mechanism that is in the form of cough. And it also facilitates the phonation that is a production of voice and at the same time it also protects the respiratory passages lower part of the respiratory tract that is the most important and uh, essential functions of the respiration next coming to the where it is located that is also very very important anatomically where it is located what is the location of the, the larynx that is in the anterior part of the neck that is uh, extends from the upper border of the epiglottis to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage. The extension of the larynx is from the upper border of the epiglottis to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage, we say I show you. Okay. And up, above, above it is communicated with the laryngopharynx. Laryngopharynx, already I know that is the pharynx, it is divided into three parts. That is the first one is the nasopharynx, next is the word oropharynx next to the last one is the laryngopharynx the part of the pharynx which is just posterior to the opening of the laryngeal inlet that is called laryngopharynx and below it is continuous with the trachea okay above it is communicated with the laryngopharynx and below it is communicated it continues as the trachea that is the extent of the larynx and if you take in the cervical region but at each level of the cervical vertebrae, the larynx is present. That is, uh, it lies opposite the C3 to C6 vertebrae in adults. In normal adults, the level of the, the larynx, that is at the level of the sixth, third cervical vertebrae to the second, sixth cervical vertebrae. That is, uh, C3 to C6 vertebra, that is the level of the adult larynx. And if you take the children, uh, there is the children way it is uh, in the higher level in the children because the neck is not properly developed in the children. The neck is not properly developed in the children. The length of the neck uh, when compared with the adults it is very short because of this reason the larynx of the children that is at the level of the C1 to C4 vertebrae. C1 to it is the uh, first cervical vertebrae to the second vertebra to the second the fourth cervical vertebra that is c1 to c4 vertebral level that is the children that is the extent of the larynx and the location of the larynx next you see here this is the larynx this is the this is the exactly site for the larynx and here this part is called elevated elevation it is more prominent in the males that is also called adam's apple or laryngeal prominence. But above this uh, uh, laryngeal prominence, and here it is formed by the thyroid cartilage. You see here, this is the thyroid cartilage, and this is the prominence of the larynx. And above this, this is the hyoid bone. This is the location for the hyoid bone. It is a very important bone of the cervical region because it is providing attachment to the many muscles. And here, this is the laryngeal prominence and below this uh, here this at this level there is another cartilage that is called cricoid cartilage cricoid cartilage we see we are going to see in detail about the what is cricoid cartilage what is thyroid cartilage all these things okay this is the location of the larynx next coming to the if you see 
this is the if you remove the skin and other coverings of the larynx this is the skeleton of the larynx skeleton of the larynx so if you view from the anteriorly this is the skeleton of the larynx here you see this is the thyroid cartilage when it is having two laminae that is right and left laminae and here this is the rechoid cartilage and here this is the hyoid bone in the hyoid bone again it is having three parts that is the body lesser cornu and greater cornu of the hyoid bone and above you can see from the anterior view a small prolongation or a small part of the epiglottis that is a, this is also one of the part of the larynx okay, these are all the things you can see in the anterior view of the larynx next coming to the measurements what is the measurement articulately what is the length of the larynx transversely what is the length of the larynx and anteroposteriorly vertically transversely and anteroposteriorly what are the different uh, measurements of the larynx you see first you see here the larynx uh, measurements it uh, there is a variation in the length of the larynx in the females and males that is why here if you see the male in the adult male the vertical length of the or diameter of the larynx is 44 mm in adult males and 36 mm in females that is the difference if you take the transverse diameter that is 43 mm in males and 41 mm in females and if you take the anteroport vertical next to transverse and antero posterior antero posterior that is uh, 36 mm in males and 26 mm in females these are all the measurements of the larynx that is the next uh, what are the structures forming the actually what are the structures forming the larynx that is the skeleton of the larynx it is composed of uh, first it is formed by with the help of the cartilage the cartilage is of the skeletal framework of the larynx uh, and these cartilages they are supported by the some other structures that is uh, the cartilages are connected to one another with the help of the these structures that is the uh, first one is the ligaments in between the cartilages and joints that is especially the synovial joints synovial joints and uh, cricovocal and quadrate membranes cricovocal and quadrate membranes and uh, moved by intrinsic muscles the intrinsic muscles of the larynx why because why they are called intrinsic means so they are taking origin from the laryngeal cartilages and they are also inserted to the laryngeal cartilages that is why they are called intrinsic muscles of the larynx intrinsic muscles of the larynx okay these uh, intrinsic muscles of the larynx they are uh, helpful for the movement of the vocal cords and movement of the different cartilages of the larynx and different uh, Uh, functions we see that okay next uh, the cavity is lined by mucus membrane and within the inside the larynx uh, there is a, a mucus lining the cavity the cavity the cavity is lined by mucus membrane these are all the structures we are going to see within the larynx first the skeletal framework of the larynx it is formed by the mostly it is formed by the nine cartilages nine cartilages uh, we see what are the different cartilages and next these connect cartilages are connected by each, each other with the help of the ligaments synovial joints cricovocal and quadrate membranes cricovocal and quadrate membranes we see okay next to moved by intrinsic muscles the cartilages movements are very very important to produce the different uh, sounds and to protect the larynx so all these functions the intrinsic muscles are very helpful and next is it is lined by mucus membrane okay next you see this is the larynx here you see this is the anterior view already we have seen next you see what are the cartilages of the larynx what are the cartilages which are taking part in the formation of the larynx here the cartilages of the larynx they are divided into two parts that is uh, some are paired cartilages that means uh, one side right side one left side one and some are unpaired cartilages that is uh, they are not paired there is no only one cartilage is there out of these uh, nine cartilages uh, three are paired paired means three into two that is six and three are unpaired these are the three unpaired cartilages okay total nine cartilages nine cartilages 
that is uh, paid paid cartilages are retinoid cartilage corniculate cartilage and cuneiform cartilage retinoid corniculate and cuneiform you see in detail and next uh, unpaid cartilages are epiglottis thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage these are the nine cartilages they are taking part in the formation of the skeletal framework of the larynx okay out of these uh, usually you already you know that is uh, there are different cartilages that is uh, fibro cartilage is there hyaline cartilage is there elastic cartilage is there and these are the cartilages uh, they are made up of most of the cartilages all the laryngeal cartilages are hyaline in structure except epiglottis corniculate cuneiform vocal processor and apex of the retinoid and are made up of fibro elastic or elastic fibro cartilage elastic or fibro elastic cartilage these are the structures they are made up of fibro elastic cartilage the remaining are the big most part of the laryngeal cartilages they are made up of hyaline cartilage hyaline cartilage because of hyaline cartilage only there are synovial joints they are present in the larynx we see what are the synovial joints all these things and why these uh, cartilages uh, small small cartilages uh, especially here you have to uh, remember one thing the protective structures of the larynx they are made up of hyaline cartilage the structures which are taking part in the formation of active function of the larynx active function of the larynx that is phonation respiration and protection all these functions are performed by the small cartilages that is uh, paid cartilages these are made up of uh, and epiglottis also epiglottis also made up of uh, fibroelastic cartilage because as the age advances already you know that is um, on all our bones in our body all bones are nothing but the cartilaginous models in the embryo or in the chain bone as age advances they are replaced by bone that is the by the process of ossification here here also there is a possibility of uh, if there is a hyaline cartilage as age advances there is a chances for the ossification and they may convert into bones and it is it may affect the its function because of this reason these cartilages especially the cartilages that is epiglottis corniculate cuneiform vocal process and apex of the retinoid cartilage they are made up of elastic fibro cartilage because this elastic fibro cartilage it is not replaced by bone or it, it may not go it may not underwent the ossification because of this reason these cartilage because lifelong you have to speak life lifelong you have to protect your lifelong you have to take respiration because to perform this function these cartilages are made up of fibro elastic cartilage that is the most important difference between the cartilages which are made up of hyaline cartilage and cartilages which are made up of elastic cartilage you see here these are all the different cartilages of the larynx first the big one is the this is the thyroid cartilage and here this is the thyroid cartilage these are the two lamina right and left lamina in between these two this is the angle of the thyroid and above this this is the epiglottis this is also unpaid cartilage thyroid cartilage this is also unpaid cartilage and another big cartilage unpaid that is the cricoid cartilage cricoid cartilage it is a shield shape it is a leaf like leaf like epiglottis is a shape like a leaf and it is a shield like structure that is thyroid cartilage and this is the segment link shape this is the cricoid cartilage and you see these are the small cartilages here this is the retinoid cartilage retinoid cartilage this is very very important cartilage because this is the cartilage which is taking active part in the different movements of the vocal cords and different movements of the muscles of the larynx okay the most of the muscles they are attached to this uh, retinoid cartilage because of this reason this cartilage it is very very important and apart from this there are two small cartilages that is corniculate and cuneiform corniculate and cune cuneiform means wedge shape cuneiform means wedge shape and there is one corn like that is a small one that is called corniculate these are all the one two three and one pair and another pair and another pair total 6 plus 3 total 
nine cartilages of the larynx. First, you see about the epiglottis. Epiglottis already I have seen. This is the leaf shaped. Okay, it is having upper end, lower end, and two borders, right and left borders. And two surfaces, anterior and posterior surfaces. We see here. This is the uh, coronal section, coronal sagittal section of the larynx, sagittal section of the larynx, sagittal section of the larynx to take. And this is the epiglottis. This one is the epiglottis, epiglottis. Uh, and here it is made up of fibroelastic cartilage, fibroelastic cartilage. Okay. And here it is leaf-like. Uh, and here it is having two borders, two lateral borders, upper end, lower end, and anterior surface. Okay, you see, this is the anterior surface, and this is the posterior surface. Here, the posterior surface, it is uh, totally it is in relation with the larynx. There is a laryngeal inlet, and the anterior surface, upper part of the anterior surface, it is uh, forming a fossa. That is nothing but the vellicate. Well, like you had seen while well, discussing about the palatine tonsil and tongue. You have seen there are two connections between the. You see here, this is the epiglottis, this is the epiglottis. From the epiglottis, in the median, there is a median connection that is a fold of epithelium, that is a mucous membrane that is called median glasso epiglottic fold. And on the lateral side also, there are two glasso epiglottic folds. In between these two folds, there is a space. This is called vallecula. This is called vallecula. And here, this is the larynx. The epiglottis. Okay, here this is the upper border, and here it is the lower border. The lower border, lower end, upper end, and lower end. The lower end, upper end is free. Upper end is free, and the lower end is it is connected with the thyroid cartilage. Thyroid cartilage. Okay, that is the epiglottis. You see again. You can see if you take the section of the larynx, that is the coronal section, like this coronal section. You can see this is the epiglottis, this is the upper end, this is the lower end, these are the borders, this is the posterior surface, what we are seeing from the behind, this is the posterior view and anteriorly that side, okay, this is the epiglottis, here it is connected with the thyroid cord, this is the thyroid cartilage and upper end is free, upper end is free, here the lining epithelium of the, this epiglottis, you see here it is made up of fibroelastic cartilage, it is a one of the unpaid cartilage and here this part of the cartilage it is made up of that is that means anterior surface and uh, upper part of the posterior surface upper part of the posterior surface up to this level it is uh, lined by stratified squamous epithelium stratified squamous epithelium the remaining area the remaining part of the epiglottis it is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium ciliated columnar epithelium here, the anterior surface of the epiglottis, it is connected with the hyoid bone through a hyoepiglottic ligament. Hyoepiglottic ligament. And it is also connected to the thyroid to the ligament. This is the inner ligament. And in between the epiglottis and the, the this, uh, hyoid and the uh, upper border of the thyroid cartilage, this is the membrane. This is called thyrohyoid membrane. Thyrohyoid membrane. Okay. This is the epiglottis. Here, the, on the later, both the sides, both the sides of the epiglottis, you see, this is the one side, this is the two borders, lateral borders, they are connected to the retinoid cartilage. This is the one retinoid cartilage here, this is a, another retinoid cartilage. Okay. Escape on the back to the rally.
Okay, you see here this is the epiglottis, okay, and this is the posterior surface, that side, anterior surface. Here, this epiglottic on both sides is connected with the retinoid cartilage through a re epiglottic fold of membrane. Re epiglottic fold, re epiglottic fold, and this is the re epiglottic fold. Okay, next. Another cartilage that is a thyroid cartilage. Thyroid cartilage, it is like a shield. Thyroid cartilage is like a shield and it acts like a shield to protect the larynx from the front and lies opposite to C4 to C5. At the level of the C4 to C5 particular level, this is the thyroid cartilage and it consists of two laminae that is a right and it is like this. The thyroid cartilage is like this. This is the left lamina, this is the right lamina. And here in the meeting point of these two lamina, we call it as uh, angle of the thyroid. That is nothing but the Adam's apple. This is also called Adam's apple. It is more prominent in the males because here the larynx development in a males is different from the females. Suppose if you see the, the children, especially in the male boys, the larynx it is small. But the children's voice and female voice is almost the same because in male, adult male, there is an enormous increase in the size of the larynx because of this reason, there is a formation of angle. Here, that is nothing but the Adam's apple or angle of the thyroid. Here, that is about 90 degrees in the adult male and 120 degrees in the adult female. That is the angle of the thyroid. That is 120 degrees in the adult female and uh, 90 degrees in the adult male and here each lamina is quadrilateral and consists of four borders and two surfaces you see here this is the side view or lateral view of the thyroid cartilage here this is the angle of the thyroid cartilage and this is the one lamina what you are seeing this is the one lamina and it is having four borders that is the anterior border superior border inferior border and posterior border posterior border and it is also having two surfaces that is inner surface outer surface inner surface and you see here if you view the thyroid cartilage total from behind this is the what you are seeing this is the inner surface and what we just now we had seen this is the outer surface of the th each thyroid lamina each thyroid lamina and the posterior border there is a prolongation from the thyroid lamina this is called superior horn this is called inferior horn here, the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage, it is forming in the um, articulation. It is articulating with the cricothyroid joint. Through the cricothyroid joint, it is nothing but the synovial joint. Thyroid, you, can, you see, what is the fossa it is taking part? We see when discussing about the cricoid cartilage. Okay, this is the cricothyroid joint. Cricothyroid joint. Okay, this is the lamina. And here, each thyroid lamina, this is the upper border and this is the lower border and this is the posterior border. Here in the middle there is an anterior border. Here the superior border of the each thyroid lamina, it is connected with the hyoid bone, especially the inferior border of the hyoid bone through a membrane that is called thyrohyoid membrane. Thyrohyoid membrane and the inferior border of the thyroid cartilage, again it is connected with the superior border of the Cricoid cartilage through a membrane. This is the cricothyroid membrane, cricothyroid membrane, and especially the anterior part of this cricothyroid membrane. Here there is a, a small uh, different structure that is called conus elasticus. Conus elasticus. Conus elasticus is nothing but the, the anterior part of the uh, thyrohyoid membrane. Thyrohyoid membrane. You see here, this is the conus elasticus. You see here at this level, this is the conus elasticus, and this is the nothing but the thyrohyoid membrane. Okay, next coming, coming to the in, internal surface or inner surface of the thyroid cartilage. This is very, very important because it is providing attachment to the very important structures. Important structures 
because um, from above downwards, if you see, this is the thyroepiglottic ligament. Here, from here, it goes to the epiglottis, already you had seen. And on both sides, uh, just uh, below this uh, thyroepiglottic ligament, on both sides of this uh, uh, thyroid cartilage, there are other ligaments that is uh, vestibular ligament. Vestibular ligament. So what is vestibular ligament? We see, right? I show you. Next. And below that, there are other ligaments that is vocal ligaments. Vocal ligaments. These are the five ligaments that are attached to the angle of the thyroid, that is, internal surface, internal surface of the angle of the thyroid. These are by the there are five ligaments that are attached. First one is the thyro epiglottic ligament, and below that there are two ligaments that is vestibular ligaments, and below that again there are two ligaments that is uh, vocal ligaments. These are the five ligaments. And other muscles, there are three muscles are also attached here that is on both sides of this uh, vocal ligaments. On both sides of this vocal ligaments, there are muscles that are attached that is the uh, vocalis muscle. And next is the thyroepiglotticus muscle and another thyroarytenoidus muscle. Thyroarytenoidus muscle. Okay, these are the three muscles that are attached at this level. These are the important structures that are attached to the thyroid cartilage, especially the posterior surface of the angle of the thyroid cartilage. Next cartilage is the cricoid cartilage. You see, this is the cricoid cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage. The shape of the cricoid cartilage is signet ring, ring shape, just like our finger ring, the finger ring shape, that is a signet ring shape. Here, this is the cricoid cartilage. Over this cricoid cartilage, there are other cartilages, the paired cartilages. This is the arytenoid cartilage. This is the corniculate. This is the corniculate. These are the two cartilage. Arytenoid cartilage and cricoid cartilage. In between these two, there is another joint, cricoarytenoid joint. Cricoarytenoid joint. This is also a synovial joint. And it is a, a sliding movement and a rotatory movement. It produces sliding movement and rotatory movements. So these movements between the cricoid cartilage and arytenoid cartilage, they are very, very important for the different movements of the vocal cords and different uh, phases of the voice, uh, different phases of the respiration. And these are all the things we discuss. Okay. See, here, what is uh, cricoid cartilage? It is a foundation stone of the larynx. Here, because this is the lowermost part of the laryngeal cartilages, this is the foundation. Or this uh, uh, cricoid cartilage only, there is a larynx. Just like our foundation to the, our building. Okay, like that, that is why it is called foundation stone of the larynx. Escape, uh, shape, the shape of the signet ring. Uh, the shape of the cricoid uh, cartilage is signet ring shape. And uh, it is complete ring. It is a complete ring. And it is having two parts. The, the ring is divided into two parts. You see, this is the anterior arch and posterior lamina. This is the posterior part. This is the anterior part. Anterior part is called arch and posterior part is called lamina. Posterior part is called lamina. Okay. These are the two parts of the picoid cartilage. Here, the muscles uh, which are attached to the picoid cartilage, that is, muscles are lateral cricoarytenoides and cricothyroid and posterior cricoarytenoid. And the joints are two joints, that is, uh, cricoarytenoid joint and cricothyroid joint. Cricoarytenoid and cricothyroid joints. Let you see here. This is the total cricoid cartilage. This is the anterior lamina, anterior arch, and this is the posterior lamina. Here, the posterior lamina of the cricoid cartilage it is forming two art class surfaces on both sides. Right side two art class surfaces, and left side also two art class surfaces. The upper art class surface it articulates with the Arytenoid cartilage and it takes part in the formation of the cricoarytenoid joint. It is a synovial joint. It produces gliding and rotatory movements. Here, this is the another facet, the articular facet. It articulates with the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage and it forms the cricothyroid joint. Cricothyroid joint. These are the two synovial joints that are present in the cartilages of the larynx. Cartilages of the larynx. Okay, here this is the Required cartilage. Here, the and arch of the required this is the anterior part of the required cartilage. It is having upper border, lower border, anterior surface, or outer surface, inner surface. 
Here, the upper border, it is again, it is divided to, it is having two parts. That is inner lip, outer lip. Inner lip and outer lip. The outer lip, is, this is the outer lip and this is the inner lip. Okay, the inner lip, it is providing attachment to the thyrocricothyroid membrane. Cricothyroid membrane or cricovocal, it is also goes upwards, cricovocal membrane. Cricovocal membrane. And again, here, below the outer border, it is providing attachment to the muscle. It is providing attachment to the muscle. Here, at this and outer surface, it is providing attachment to another muscle. That is the cricothyroid muscle. Cricothyroid muscle. This muscle is very, very important. A special muscle of the larynge, intrinsic muscles of the larynx. And if you see the lamina, the lamina of the cricoid cartilage, Okay, the lamina of the cricoid cartilage. You see, this is the cricoid cartilage. This is the lamina of the cricoid cartilage. You are viewing from the behind. Here it is providing attachment to the posterior cricoarytenoidis muscle. Cricoarytenoidis muscle. And it is also providing here on the both sides of the lamina. In the central part of the lamina, it is providing attachment to the tendon that is nothing but the tendon of the esophagus. Tendon of the esophagus. <clears throat> this tendon of the esophagus, it is formed by the union of the longitudinal bundles of the muscles of the esophagus. Muscles of the esophagus. Okay, that is the about the cricoid uh, cartilage. Next, coming to the arytenoid cartilage. This is the very, very important cartilage. Because it is the cartilage, it is providing attachment to the many muscles of the larynx and it is also taking part in the active part in the for production of the voice and the protection of the larynx. Okay, these are uh, pair cartilages, each is somewhat pyramidal in shape. It is a pyramidal in shape. The, what is the shape of the retinoid cartilage? It is a pyramidal shape and each, cart each cartilage presents apex, base, three surfaces that is a posterior surface medial surface anterolateral surface okay first one is apex it is directed above and base it is directed below just now you have seen that is it is taking part base it is taking part in the formation of the cricoarytenoid joint it articulates with the facet for the uh, this uh, arytenoid cartilage on for the lamina of the cricoid cartilage and it is taking part Part you see this is the this is the site for the articulation of the this uh, base of the uh, arytenoid cartilage with the cricoid cartilage and again it is having three surfaces that is posterior surface medial surface and anterolateral surface and two processes these processes are also very very important because these are the processes they are providing muscle attachment to the muscles that is the uh, muscles of the larynx okay that is uh, one is the Muscular process and another one is the vocal process. Muscular process and vocal process. See, apex, base, and three surfaces that is the posterior surface, medial surface, anterolateral surface, and two processes that is one is the muscular process and another one is the vocal process. These are all the different parts of the arytenoid cartilage. You see here, if you view from the above, view from the above, here this is the thyroid cartilage. And here, this is the cricoid cartilage. And here, this is the arytenoid cartilage. Arytenoid cartilage is like a pyramid. Okay, you see. Here, this is the muscular process. This is called vocal process. What we are seeing, this point area, this is nothing but the apex. And below, it is articulated. This is the facet for the uh, arytenoid cartilage or the lamina of the cricoid cartilage. Here, this is the area it is nothing but the base and three surfaces three surfaces that is uh, this is the medial surface okay this is the anterolateral surface this is the posterior surface these are the three surfaces and uh, three processes that is two processes this is the vocal process this is the muscular process and this is the apex and base it is the base it is taking part in the formation of the joint okay these are all the different parts Next, coming to the, these are all the muscles attached to the, the arytenoid cartilage. Because of this reason, the arytenoid cartilage is a key cartilage in the production of wise and the protection of the larynx. Okay, this is the, if you cut, take the section, 
transverse section of the uh, larynx at the level of the retinoid cartilage. You see, this is the triangle. You see, this is the anterolateral surface, this is the medial surface, and this is the posterior surface. This is the vocal process, this is the muscular process. Okay, and these are all the structures attached to the this, uh, this is the muscoid is called muscular process because it is providing attachment to the many muscles. You see here, this is the transverse retinoid and this is the oblique retinoid, oblique retinoid muscle and this is the posterior cricoarytenoidus muscle, posterior cricoarytenoid, this is the lateral cricoarytenoidus muscle this in between the cricoid and retinoid. Okay, this is the in between the posterior part of the cricoid, this muscular process here because of this, this reason this is called posterior cricoarytenoid and this is the lateral cricoarytenoid and here this is the thyroarytenoid. The arytenoid cartilage it is connected especially the anterolateral surface it is connected with the one muscle that is called thyroarytenoid muscle. It is connected with the thyroid cartilage that is an internal surface of the thyroid cartilage with the post anterolateral surface of the arytenoid cartilage and there is another muscle important muscle that is the vocalis muscle. Vocalis muscle this is the muscle it is responsible for the production of the Wise and here this is the these are the this is the surface. Next to the tip there is a part. This is called why it is called vocal process. This is called vocal process because it is providing attachment to the vocal ligament, vocal ligament and vocal muscle. And these are the two structures that are present in the vocal cord. Vocal cord here it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. You see huh? what is the lining? What is the vocal cord? All these things. Just you see, these are all the muscles uh, that are related with the arytenoid cartilage. Because of this reason, the arytenoid cartilage is very, very important. With the help of all these muscles, with the help of all these muscles, it is producing movements and it is taking part in the, this is the nothing but the glottis. This is the actual area of the uh, production of voice uh, and this is the area to allow the air into the lungs or out of the Lungs are into the larynx and out of the larynx. So because of this reason, it is regulated by the with the help of these muscles, and these muscles they are helping to the movement. If you they drag like this, there is an abduction. If you they contract, it produces adduction. Like that, there are all these are all the muscles that are attached to the arytenoid cartilage that are regulating the, the side of the glottis or side of the size of the glottis. That is why this arytenoid cartilage is very very Next, uh, these are all the muscles attached. Next, coming to the joints, that is the glico thyroid, already I had seen, and the glico retinoid joint, and uh, ligaments, ligaments of the larynx, uh, that is a uh, thyrohyoid ligament, hyoepiglottic ligament, and glico tracheal ligament. And membranes, that is a uh, fibroelastic membrane of the larynx, that is, it is lining membrane, and quadrate membrane. And conus elasticus and crico vocal membranes. These are all the membranes that are uh, in between the cartilages of the larynx. Okay, you see, this is the membranes. Here, if you see the larynx from the posterior view, here this is the cricoid cartilage, and this is the retinoid cartilage, and here this is the apex, and this is the muscular process. On the anterior part, there is a Vocal process and this is the posterior crico arytenoid ligament and the crico thyroid articulation. Here, this is the crico thyroid joint, it is also having small, small ligaments. And this is the thyrohyoid membrane. Thyroid membrane. These are all the different views. This is the thyroid cartilage, if you see from the front. And here, coming to the cavity of the lab. Cavity of the larynx. Here it extends from the inlet of the larynx, that is from the to the inlet of the larynx, that is from the upper border of the okay, epiglottis to the lower border of the epicoid cartilage. The inlet is uh, placed obliquely. The inlet of the larynx it is not striped. Suppose if you take if this is the epiglottis, the inlet is like this, obliquely placed. It is obliquely placed, and if inlet is not striped, it is oblique like this. It is like this. Okay. That is the obliquely placed. What are the boundaries of the inlet of the larynx? That is very, very important to protect the larynx anteriorly by the epiglottis and posteriorly by the interarytenoid folds of mucous membrane and uh, 
on each side ary epiglottic folds these are all the three structures they are forming the boundary to the inlet of the larynx inlet of the larynx i show you you see here yeah. this is the inlet of the larynx inlet of the larynx anteriorly it is formed by the epiglottis and posteriorly in between the arytenoid cartilages there is a posterior membrane arytenoid intraarytenoid membrane on both sides this is the ary epiglottic fold from arytenoid to the side of the epiglottis there is a fold of mucous membrane this is called ary epiglottic fold these are all the structures they are forming the inlet of the larynx you see this is not straight it is not like this straight it is oblique the inlet of the larynx is oblique okay these are all the boundaries of the inlet of the larynx next uh, the cavity of the larynx interior presents three pairs of mucous folds if you see the interior of the of the larynx there are three mucous folds there is a ary epiglottic fold vestibular fold and vocal fold ary epiglottic vestibular and vocal folds these are the three folds you see here this is the ary epiglottic fold this is the vestibular fold and this is the vocal fold these are the three folds they are present within the larynx again you can see here this is the one fold the epiglottic fold and this is the vestibular fold and this is the vocal fold this is the inlet of the larynx and this is totally call it as cavity of the larynx cavity of the larynx okay and the space between the these folds the space between these two fold the folds that is uh, in between the ary epiglottic folds the space is called laryngeal inlet the laryngeal inlet is nothing but the, the space between the ary epiglottic folds and the space between the two vestibular folds is called rima vestibuli rima vestibuli rima vestibuli what is rima vestibuli that is the space between the two vestibular folds and another one is the rima glottidis rima glottidis the space between the two vocal folds two vocal folds we call it as rima glottidis these are the three spaces between the folds you see here this is the laryngeal inlet in between these two folds this is the laryngeal inlet and here this is the rima vestibuli this is the these two are the vestibular folds in between these two this is the vestibular rima vestibuli and these are two are the vocal folds in between these two folds there is a space this is called rima glottidis these are all the three spaces between the folds of the larynx inside the larynx here here also you can see okay this is the inlet of the larynx and this is the vestibular folds these are the uh, vocal folds this is the inlet and this is the rima vestibuli this is the rima glottidis and here the folds of the larynx this larynx inside it divides the larynx into different parts okay that is uh, vestibular vestibule of the larynx the part of the interior of the larynx above the vestibular folds we call it as vestibule of the larynx and uh, in between the vestibular folds and the vocal folds in between the vestibular folds and vocal folds we call it as sinus or ventricle of the larynx sinus of the larynx or ventricle of the larynx what is sinus of the larynx or ventricle of the larynx that is the space between the two vocal that is a vestibular folds and vocal folds see here this is the sinus of the this area this area is called sinus of the larynx this is these are the vestibular folds these are the vocal folds in between these two this space is called sinus of the larynx okay like sinus of the larynx next another one infraglottic part that is the part of the part of the interior of the larynx below the vocal folds below the vocal folds and this part of the larynx we call it as infraglottic part infraglottic part that is the cavity of the larynx it is divided to three parts that is the laryngeal inlet and uh, that is the vestibular part okay and next uh, is the sinus of the larynx that is the or ventricle of the larynx it is also called ventricle of the larynx that is in between the vestibular folds and 
vocal folds and below that vocal folds that part that is called infraglottic because we call it as the glottid is a space between the two vocal folds below that this glottis we call it as there is an infraglottic part these are the three divisions of the interior of the larynx next what are the boundaries of the laryngeal inlet already we have seen that is in anteriorly epiglottis on both sides there are very epiglottic folds and posteriorly by the interadenoid fold and here it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium the inlet of the larynx it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium because already you know that is a most part of the respiratory passages they are lined by ciliated columnar epithelium but it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium already you know why there is a uh, it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium because it is the area it is exposed to the air and tail which is following the food is passing over this inlet of the larynx because of this reason it is uh, provided with the protection by the lining that is called non stratified squamous epithelium non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium because why it is there is no keratinization you have to maintain the moisture if you want to maintain the moisture there must be no keratinization because of this reason this area is supplied it is lined by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and each epiglottic fold contains what are the structures which are present in the ary epiglottic fold that is there are two muscles that is uh, ary epiglotticus and thyro epiglotticus ary epiglotticus and thyro epiglotticus muscles and two cartilages that is corniculate and cuneiform cartilages and two fibro elastic membrane that is uh, upper free margin of the quadrate number these are all the structures which are present in the each ary epiglottic fold within the this is the ary epiglottic fold within this ary epiglottic fold there are structures that is two muscles that is uh, ary epiglotticus and thyro epiglotticus why it is they are called epiglotticus they are connected with the thyro uh, epiglottis uh, from the arytenoid cartilage to the epiglottis that is why it is called ary epiglotticus from the thyroid cartilage to the epiglottis that is why it is called thyro epiglotticus and two cartilage small small cartilages the small paired cartilages that is corniculate and cuneiform cartilages and uh, that is a quadrate membrane okay that is the about the that is the inlet and boundary of the inlet of the larynx and ary epiglottic fold next come to the rima vestibuli rima what is rima vestibuli that is the space between the two vestibular folds space between the two vestibular folds this space is called rima vestibuli it is a space between the two vestibular folds each vestibular fold is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium and contains mucus submucus and areolar tissue and vestibular ligament this is a another ligament that is called vestibular ligament already you have seen in the posterior surface of the uh, thyroid cartilage that at the angle of the thyroid cartilage on both sides uh, there is a attachment of one ligament that is called vestibular ligament this is also present in the this uh, fold that is uh, on both sides of the this uh, vestibular it is in the vestibular folds that is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium and it also having sub mucosa and areolar tissue and within this there is a vestibular ligament the free margin of the vestibular folds slopes downward and medially they are not straight they are not straight they are downward and medially and it acts as a exit wall it helps holding of breath breath that is very very important here if you want if you take deep inspiration then if you want to hold the breath there must be closure of the vestibular folds vestibular with the help of the vestibular folds only you are able to arrest the that is expiration 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 after full inspiration after full inspiration that is why it is called exit wall it allows the air to enter into the lungs or into the larynx but it won't allow if you want to arrest the exit of the air it ex uh, arrest the exit of the air. that is why it is called exit wall okay that is the important uh, function of this uh, vestibular fold next uh, coming to the rima glottidis this is the most important structure 
this is the actual area of the production of wise production of wise here it is lined by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium because it is actively functioning while speaking while producing wise and it is also exposed to the air while taking respiration because of this reason it is also provided with the non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium because why it is non keratinized that is to maintain the moisture to maintain the moisture and here another important uh, structural uh, structural uh, safety of this hemoglobin uh, disease uh, devoid of uh, submucosa there is no submucosa in the vocal folds why there is no submucosa we see okay this is the lined by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium it acts like a entry wall entry wall well, if you want to take respiration you must widen the this folds vocal folds then only the entry the air enters into the lungs air enter into the lungs or into the larynx that is why it is called entry wall entry wall that is a uh, vocal for the vestibular folds are the exit walls this remoglotides are vocal folds of the entry wall it is a entry wall in front this angle of the thyroid cortex that is remoglotides what are the relations anteriorly this related with the angle of the or posterior part of the surface of the angle of the thyroid and behind inter retinoid mucus fold on all on each side vocal folds and vocal process vocal fold it is just a fold vocal process means it comes to the ligament muscle all these things okay that is the this on both sides of this uh, there are vocal folds you see here this is the uh, laparoscopic the laryngoscopic view of the uh, this uh, inlet of the larynx here this is the these are the vocal folds there is vestibular folds this is the vestibular fold these two are the vestibular fold these are the real vocal folds vocal and uh, these are vestibular folds are also called false vocal folds false vocal folds this is the true vocal fold this is the true vocal fold okay here this is the entry wall next uh, vocal folds what is vocal fold or vocal cord each fold is pair fairly white in color just like a it is fairly white and lined by stratified squamous epithelium and devoid of mucosa why because if there is any inflammation of the larynx if there is a mucosa especially submucosa and uh, if it may ca cause accumulation of fluid and it may produce edema because of this reason there is a chances for the obstruction to the respiration and phonation because of this reason there is no submucosa and it contains vocal ligament medially vocalis muscle laterally vocal ligament medially and vocalis muscle laterally and here again this vocal fold it is divided into two parts just now we have seen you see it is the anterior part and this is the posterior part or this is called intermembranous part and this is the intercartilaginous part because here the vocal process of the arytenoid cartilage extends up to this level this is the intercartilaginous part here also up to this level this is the intercartilaginous part and here anterior to this this is the intermembranous part intermembranous part if you divide the, the each vocal fold into five parts that is anterior two fifth three fifths anterior three fifths of the this vocal fold it is formed by membrane intermembranous part and posterior two fifths posterior two fifths it is formed by cartilaginous part cartilaginous part okay that is the these are the subdivision you see here the intermembranous part that is anterior three fifths and intercartilaginous part that is the posterior two fifths to posterior two fifths of the vocal fold that is uh, what is the specialty of the vocal fold here it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium non keratinized because it is under with the wear and tear because of this reason it is provided with the stratified squamous epithelium and it is divided of submucosa because there is to prevent the edema to and it may cause obstruction to the respiration and phonation because of this this is the special arrangement in the vocal folds to produce the movements there is a ligament and vocalis muscle with the help of the vocalis muscle and the with the help of the vocal ligament 
it is able to produce the movement and what are the subdivisions of the vocal folds that is inter membranous part and inter cartilaginous part that is anterior three fifths of the vocal fold that is the inter membranous part and uh, posterior two fifths is the inter cartilaginous part okay here also you can see this is the inter membranous part and this is the inter cartilaginous part this is the vocal process of the retinoid cartilage both sides and this is the membranous part okay and here if you take the section of this vocal process this is the section of the vocal process that is uh, here it is lined by epithelium and uh, intermediate layer superficial and deep layers and inside this there is a muscle this is the vocalis muscle vocalis muscle and here there is no submucosa it is the speciality of the vocal folds here these are the if you see the section transverse section of the here this is the lining epithelium that is non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium here this is the vocal ligament and this is the vocalis muscle vocalis muscle these are all the structures which are present in the vocal folds each vocal fold and here you also you can see this part is called inter cartilaginous part and this is the inter membranous part here the length of the is vocal folds that is it is 23 mm in males and 17 mm in females 23 mm in males and 73 mm in females sorry 17 mm in females okay that is the length this length this length is here this length of the this uh, inlet of the uh, cavity of the, uh, the space between the two vocal folds it is very very important because it varies uh, depending upon the uh, age of the individual and especially in the children it may be less especially in small children and in females it is less in males it is more here this difference is uh, very very important especially when we we'll, uh, go for the artificial respiration that is uh, to introduce the endotracheal tube endotracheal if you want to introduce the endotracheal tube first you have to estimate the the, uh, the size of the this uh, edema glottidis uh, and uh, you have to select the adequate uh, size of the endotracheal tube depending upon the size of the this uh, usually anesthetists they see the little finger little finger of the individual and the size of the tube endotracheal tube they select by seeing the little finger of the individual it is more in the males more size in the males and less in the females okay that is the importance of the space between the two vocal folds and the length of the vocal folds next coming to the shape of the vocal folds shape in between the uh, so there is a rima glottis the space between the two vocal folds it varies in different phases of uh, speaking singing and different uh, clinical conditions it may vary suppose if you take in quiet breathing quiet breathing without any disturbance if you are taking quiet breathing that is the inter membranous part it is triangular in shape and inter cartilaginous part is the rectangular in shape you see here this is the shape of the rima glottidis while quiet breathing quiet breathing here this is the inter membranous part it is triangular and here inter cartilaginous part it is a rectangular okay so this is the shape of the uh, rima glottidis while uh, quiet breathing quiet breathing okay next uh, in high pitched sounds suppose if you are shouting you are uh, producing high pitched sounds in that condition what happens the rima linearly chink becomes very narrow due to adduction of the vocal folds adduction of the vocal folds if you see here this is the condition if you are producing high pitched sound there is uh, the inner the, the glottis becomes chinked and it is uh, producing a linear slit linear slit in high product uh, that is high pitched voice production high pitched voice production and next another condition that is in full inspiration the glottis is diamond shape glottis is if you suppose if you take full inspiration what happens the glottis dilates and uh, it is like a diamond you see here this is the diamond shape diamond shaped during full inspiration full inspiration 
and this is the another condition that is in the whispering that is the in whispering intermembranous part highly adducted highly adducted and intercartilaginous part primed okay okay like this it is intermembranous part is adducted and cartilaginous part is like this so it is like a inverted and a total outline gives inverted funnel inverted funnel shape you see funnel shape we are using the funnels in the biochemistry labs okay so this is like a inverted funnel shape inverted funnel shape this is the intermembranous part this is the intercartilaginous part it is uh, closely adducted the internal intercartilaginous part is abducted intercartilaginous part is abducted because of this reason in whispering voice uh, it produces like a inverted funnel shape that is the shape of the different phases of the and different conditions of the uh, speech it is the, the shape of the, the variations in the shape of the emma rotis okay next coming to the sinus of morgogne that is uh, ara this is also called ventricle larynx of the uh, ventricle of the larynx ventricle of the larynx it is a narrow fusiform cleft between the vestibular and vocal folds it is a narrow fusiform cleft you see this is the sinus of the larynx this is the vestibular fold and this is the vocal fold in between these two folds there is a space this is nothing but the sinus of the larynx here narrow vestibular narrow fusiform between the these two folds next to saccule of the larynx this is also very very important the anterior part of the sinus of the larynx it continues it they continues in between the thyroid cartilage and the fold that is a that is a vestibular fold it continues like a extension like a canal that is called saccule of the larynx saccule of the larynx here you see this is this one this is the saccule of the larynx here it is lined by mucus glands it is lined by mucus glands because already you know there is no mucus glands over the this vocal folds vocal folds and the secretions from this saccule yeah, it moistens the vocal folds here yeah, there is no submucosa the, there is no submucosa means there is no mucus glands over the this vocal folds because of this reason this it is it is a saccule of the larynx it is it is loaded with the mucus glands mucus it, the secretions from this saccule it comes and it mo maintains the moisture over the vocal folds that is the most important function of the this saccule that is called oil can function oil can action oil can the saccule contains mucus glands and helps in lubricating the vocal folds this is called oil can action oil can it acts like a oil can whenever there is a need for the lubrication it produces the mucus secretion and it uh, moistens the this uh, vocal folds that is the importance of the saccule of the larynx okay next uh, coming to the mucus membrane of the larynx okay what are the what is the mucus membrane of the it that is stratified squamous epithelium it covers anterior part and upper half of the posterior surface of the epiglottis upper parts of the ary epiglottic folds and vocal folds already you have seen this is the these are all covered by stratified squamous epithelium non keratinized and here is ciliated columnar epithelium the rest of the laryngeal mucosa rest of the laryngeal mucosa it is covered by ciliated columnar epithelium ciliated columnar epithelium mucosa is loosely attached except over the vocal ligaments and the posterior to epiglottis mucus glands are absent over the vocal folds already we have seen here the loosely attached mucosa is very very important in the larynx because whenever there is a edema of the larynx it produces obstruction to the respiration and the uh, phonation okay that is the another important point here if you take the section sagittal section of the larynx you, this is the vestibular fold and this is the vocal fold this is the vestibular fold this is the vocal fold in between these two folds this is the sinus of the larynx sinus of the larynx and this is the inlet of the larynx inlet of the larynx and here on the side it continues along the that is it forms the on the side of this one produces the saccule of the larynx 
next uh, coming to the muscles what are the muscles of the larynx that is uh, the, uh, these are all the intrinsic muscles why they are called intrinsic muscles they are taking origin from the laryngeal cartilages and they are also inserted to the laryngeal cartilages because of this reason they are called intrinsic muscles of the larynx and uh, these are all the muscles they are producing the different movements of the laryngeal cartilages and they are responsible for the production of the voice production of the voice because of this reason this laryngeal cartilages and laryngeal muscles there is especially the intrinsic muscles of the larynx are very very important trichothyroid posterior trichoarytenoid lateral trichoarytenoid transverse arytenoid oblique arytenoid aryepiglotticus thyroarytenoid and thyroepiglotticus and vocalis these are all the muscles of the that is intrinsic muscles of the larynx you see here this is the oblique arytenoids this is the transverse arytenoid this is the crico arytenoid is posterior that is the posterior crico arytenoid here this is the, this is the vocal uh, muscular process muscular process of the arytenoid cartilage and here this is the apex of the arytenoid cartilage and next you see these are all the if you see the side view side view these are all the muscles these are all the muscles to the of the larynx intrinsic muscles of the larynx and next coming to the if you see from above these are all the muscles of connected with the larynx next muscles which abduct the vocal folds posterior trichoarytenoid this is also called safety muscle of the larynx safety muscle of the larynx that is the posterior trichoarytenoid posterior trichoarytenoid is the safety muscle of the larynx muscles which adduct the vocal folds that is a lateral trichoarytenoid is intramembranous part and intracartilaginous part is adducted by the transverse and oblique arytenoid trichothyroid thyroarytenoid these are all the muscles producing the adduction of the vocal folds one is the intramembranous part and the intracartilaginous part these are the muscles next muscles which tense the vocal cords that is the trichothyroid muscle trichothyroid muscle because this is very very important muscle it is exceptional muscle you see what is exceptional you see muscles which relax the vocal cords that is thyroarytenoid and vocalis muscles which closes the inlet of the larynx that is oblique arytenoid is and are epiglotticus muscles which open the inlet of the larynx that is a thyroepiglotticus these are all the muscles and different functions see you see already we have seen all the muscles next what is the blood supply to the larynx okay that is the above the vocal folds it is supplied by superior laryngeal nerve that is nothing but the branch from the superior thyroid artery and uh, below the vocal folds it is supplied by the inferior laryngeal nerve it is nothing but the branch from the inferior thyroid artery and remote glottid is uh, dual nerve supply dual blood supply that is uh, the space between the two vocal folds that is the level of the uh, two vocal folds it is uh, applying it is uh, receiving blood supply from the both the arteries that is superior laryngeal and inferior laryngeal arteries veins corresponds the arteries and the lymphatic drainage of the there is a larynx that is above the vocal folds the lymph is drained into the prelaryngeal and diplodicastic lymph nodes and below the vocal folds the drains into the prelaryng pretracheal and the pre paratracheal group of lymph nodes and rima glottidis acts as a watershed line watershed line is the rima glottidis of the larynx next coming to the nerve supply this is very very important because the sensory nerve of the this uh, larynx that is you see the mucous membrane of the larynx above the vocal folds it is supplied by the sensory supply by the internal laryngeal nerve and below the vocal folds by the recurrent laryngeal nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve that is the internal laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve they are supplying to the mucosa of the larynx that is the sensory supply above the vocal folds is the internal laryngeal and below the vocal folds is the recurrent laryngeal internal laryngeal and recurrent laryngeal nerve next what is what are the motor nerves of the larynx all intrinsic muscles of the larynx by the recurrent laryngeal nerve all intrinsic muscles of the larynx by the recurrent laryngeal nerve except the trichothyroid muscle it is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve that is the speciality of the this is very very important bit there is a trichothyroid nerve supply or what is the muscle it is not supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve they may ask and next arytenoid is muscle arytenoid is muscle 
it is supplied by both recurrent laryngeal nerve and internal laryngeal nerve it is receiving from the nerve supply from the two nerves that is a recurrent laryngeal nerve and internal laryngeal nerve and the secretor motor supply of the larynx is the recurrent laryngeal nerve the glands of the larynx they are receiving, receiving secretor motor fibers from the through the recurrent laryngeal nerve. next to the mechanism of speech it produced by the expedial and uh, vibrators and uh, resonators and articulators these are the three four factors they are producing the voice first you see expired air it acts like a blast of air it blows the lungs from the lungs it produces vibrations over the vocal folds and it uh, the force of uh, pitch of other uh, pitch of the uh, voice it depends upon the force of the air force of the air and it produces vibrations and resonators these are the columns of the air they are present in the oh, that is uh, within the this uh, oral cavity and they are regulating the, the quality of the sound depends upon the resonators next uh, articulators these are formed by the lips teeth and other gums all these things tongue all these things next uh, applied anatomy last but not least here this is the applied anatomy here it protects the lung that is larynx from the protection by the process of coughing and damage to the external laryngeal nerve it produces weakness of the muscles and it produces a loss of tightening of the vocal folds and then it leads to voice harshness of the voice and both recurrent laryngeal nerves damage that is complete loss of phonation and only one side is damaged that is produces harshness of voice and here the laryngoscopy it is a procedure it is a procedure to visualize the condition of the vocal folds and the condition of the laryngeal mucosa and all these things if you want to see or it is also used to, to introduce the that is tube endotracheal tube that is a laryngoscopy it is a instrument okay next uh, i show you this is the laryngoscope okay it is having batteries inside and here this is the blade this is called there are different sides of blades depending upon the uh, neck size of the individual we have to change and at this tip of this one here there is a light with the help of this light you can visualize the uh, status of the or condition of the vocal folds that is the laryngoscope next uh, laryngitis that is inflammation of the larynx is called laryngitis and uh, laryngeal edema this is laryngeal edema or it obstructs the breath this laryngeal edema is the most dangerous clinical condition and it is a emergency condition also, especially during the allergic reactions if you take uh, some allergens so i had i had seen one patient uh, uh, when i was working in a hospital he took just a custard apple one half one fourth of the custard apple he sensitive to that one suddenly he developed an angioneurotic edema and it, it, the severe breathlessness and eyeballs also protruded and uh, he is uh, almost dying and immediately he gave some uh, hydrocortisone and uh, antihistamine drugs and give some oxygen support he recovered within half an hour so that is the most dangerous uh, clinical condition angio neurotic edema or uh, laryngeal edema you see here this is the laryngeal inlet here this is the 60% of the larynx closed here 75% and sometimes it may totally closed in that occasion you go for a, a clinical procedure that is called tracheostomy to temporarily to relieve the obstruction okay next you see here this is the this is just related to the vocal folds that is the this is called the vocal polyp 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 of the larynx or vocal folds polyp of the vocal folds and here you see this is the carcinoma of the vocal folds carcinoma of the vocal folds and uh, this is the obstruction here this is the procedure there is a this is called endotracheal tube endotracheal tube whenever there is obstruction due to some uh, inflammatory conditions or obstruction to damage or some growth you go for the tracheostomy or some other occasions a long term inflammatory support if the patient needs we also go for the uh, tracheostomy tube this is the tube they put the into the directly into the trachea by opening by removing the, the tracheal rings tracheal rings that is the procedure it is usually the performance of the short general anesthesia or the local anesthesia this is the important procedure next here you see this is the uh, tube endotracheal tube endotracheal tube 
they pass you have to if you want to pass through the uh, the endotracheal tube into the trachea you, you have to pass through the uh, in between the vocal folds first you have to visualize the vocal folds with the help of the laryngoscope then you have to put the uh, tube in between the two vocal folds that is the endotracheal tube okay these are all the things which are related with the larynx okay now so finally we here we, we, we come to know all the structures what is the what are the different parts of the larynx what are the cartilages of the larynx what are the muscles of the larynx and why, how the mucosa of the larynx and what are the different compartments of the larynx and each compartment it is lined by what mucosa and what are the different functions of the larynx how they are produced and what are the muscles which are responsible for the movements of the vocal folds and all these things and what are the clinical conditions which are related with the larynx all these things we discussed you study once and if you any doubt you discuss later and we meet okay thank you thank you very much